the amount of times I met diabetic clients or friends or just people that I get messages from on social media that don't know their insulin to carb ratio is a lot. And it's worrying because a lot of people, they tell, when I ask them, how did you know, you, you know how, much carb, how much insulin you need for one gram or 10 grams of carbohydrates? They tell me the doctor told them. It does not make sense because everyone is different. As you always know, anything in diabetes is a trial and error and everything in diabetes is subjective. Everyone is different. So um, I get the question, okay, how do I calculate it? And uh, then I get the same people telling me, oh, I found out, I found a calculator online. Again, there are a lot of calculators online, but it is, I, if, in my opinion, I don't even know who made these calculators, but in my opinion, they're not going to work. If they worked for, some, for one person, it's not going to work for 10. Simple. So how do you know your insulin to carb ratio? I'm going to show you. So, as I mentioned, everything is a trial and error. So what we're going to do is that we're going to try and see if the, your insulin to carb ratio is correct or not, and then adjust accordingly. So you're going to choose a day. Um, you're going to take your long-acting insulin the way you want it or the way the doctor prescribed it, and uh, you're going to sleep. You're going to wake up. You can have your breakfast, not a problem, and then you're going to wait till early afternoon. Why are you going to wait till early afternoon? Because when you wake up, our body is full of stress hormones in the morning. So I, we can't do any sort of testing in the morning. Okay, that's why I'm telling you live your life as it is and then wait till the afternoon. What you're going to do is um, your blood sugar should be in the right range. So um, UK should be from four to eight millimole per liter. Abroad, Arab countries, America should be between 72 and 145. A milligram per deciliter, I think. Anyway, um, choose a range, okay, from, from the four to eight. Let's just speak UK stuff. So let's say your blood sugar right now is six millimole per liter. And let's assume that your insulin to carb ratio, the prescribed one or the one that you used from the calculator, is let's say one to 10 grams of carbs. You are going to be choosing a source of carbs that has got only carbs, just pure sugar. Best example, a can of Pepsi or Coke or any fizzy drink, because you will know exactly how much sugar it has. You just look at it and it's probably got like 33 grams or something, but let's assume it's 30 grams to make it easier. So you're going to be consuming that Pepsi or Coke, I shouldn't say brands, but oh, anyway, uh, 30 grams of sugar, fast, simple, pure sugar. You're going to consume all of it. And providing that your insulin to carb ratio is one to 10, for 30 grams, you're meant to take three units. You're going to be taking the three units. And then you're going to be testing every half an hour. So after 30 minutes, after an hour, after an hour and a half, and after two hours. It will be very helpful if you have a CGM or a flash glucose monitor, because then you can see the curve. But if not, still this process will work. Now you take the insulin, you measured the way as I mentioned. If you found that after two hours, your blood sugar elevated more than six, it means that the insulin you're taking is not sufficient. If it dropped, if you feel that you felt that you're going to a hypo, it means that you're taking too much insulin. And then we have to adjust accordingly. Is it this simple? Yes and no. No, because you have to be in a resting state at that time. So for the two hours, you can't do any sort of activity. You can't go out for a run. You can't walk, just sit, sit on your sofa, watch TV. Obviously, you can't consume any other food. But it's simple that all you need to do is to consume that drink, take the insulin, and just wait and see. And you're going to be testing yourself four times. So you're going to be pricking your finger four times. Um, okay, so it's, it's a bit higher than uh, six millimole per liter. How high? Is it too high? Is it like 12? If it's 12, then you need to adjust your insulin by a margin. If it's 7, you don't really need to adjust your insulin, or if it depends if you're on a pump or a pen, because if you're on a pen, most pens you can only um, adjust it by one unit. So if it's a pen, 
don't adjust, don't bother. It's not that's not a big difference. But if you're on a pump, you can actually adjust it in some pumps by like 0.01 or 0.1. So then you adjust it that tiny, tiny bit. Same the other way around. If you go hypo, you do the same. You just adjust it, um, uh, decrease, reduce the insulin. It's it's that simple. And no one, no one can tell you how much insulin you need per 10 grams of carbs um, without doing any sort of testing on you. I had a client um, in the clinic and uh, they just left actually. And the re that's, that's, that's why I was so encouraged to do that video is that she told me that in, the, in another clinic that she's been to, to a doctor, a diabetologist, um, they used to give papers explaining, telling people that everyone should be on a 15 to one for some reason. So 15, so each 15 grams of carbs, you need one unit of insulin. And they're giving it to everyone, at all ages, all genders, everyone. And this is, this is insane madness because apart from that everyone is different and everyone's got different stats, different weight, these stuff do affect your insulin sensitivity. Some people suffer from insulin resistance. So take myself, for example, I sometimes suffer from insulin resistance. It happens. So eventually, some days, you're going to feel that your insulin is not working. But actually, it is working, but you're just having insulin resistance. So even the insulin resistance will be different from each person. So if you didn't do a test on yourself and your blood sugar is not stable, then you need to do that test 100%. I will explain in another video how to adjust your long-acting insulin. Hope that helped.